Overclocking an AMD GPU using its built-in driver software is incredibly simple, so hold Alt and R at the same time to open up your Radeon software. There's a bunch of tabs at the top. You click on uh, Performance tab, you click on Tuning, and if you have an AMD CPU as well as GPU, that may show up here as well. We're not getting into CPU overclocking today. Right now we're gonna go on the GPU, and it's probably set to the default unless you've done this before. You click on Custom to enable manual overclocking. I think the first time you click that, there may be a little warning thing you have have to click through. Now, we get a bunch of options here, GPU tuning, VRAM tuning, power tuning, fan tuning, smart access memory. Smart access memory is kind of its own thing. You need a compatible motherboard. If you're on a newer platform, it may be enabled by default. Uh, here we're going to look at power tuning as our first step for overclocking the GPU. Now, let me click this. I'm going to scroll down here, and I want you to watch something as I change this. So first of all, we have 330 watts on my card. You may have different. Uh, I'm uh, overclocking the Power Color Red Devil. 9070 XT. If you're on a different AMD GPU, you may see slightly different things here, but the general principles are the same. And even if you have a 9070 XT, uh, different board partner cards might have different power limits set, uh, set by default. Uh, the Red Devil is a pretty high-end card with a high power limit set by default, defaulting to around 330 watts. The reference power spec for these cards is more like 304 watts. So uh, if I actually go down to like a minus 8% power limit, we'll actually see my card drop down to where yours might even be starting. This is like where my uh, Steel Legend from ASRock 9070XT starts out at, uh, for example, but that would be called 0% on that card. So there are some differences here on the exact numbers you'll see based on which card you have. And this is one of the things you're paying for with like a factory overclocked model. Sometimes it'll have an increased power limit by default. But I want you to notice how this interacts with the clock speed. So if we look over at this clock speed measurement over here, we're under 3000 megahertz, around 2940 something, and then it can vary a little bit here. That's where uh, this card is at the kind of reference spec power limit. And one thing you can actually do with this is turn down power limits to uh, you know, make your card use less power, put out less heat, that kind of thing. But today we're looking at boosting performance. So notice that if I just go back to the 330 watts that my card defaulted to, uh, you're going to see the clock speed increase. It's now a little bit over 3,000 megahertz. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this all the way to the right to give it access to as much power as the uh, board is going to allow it. So when I do this, I'm going to go up to about a little over 360 watts, and you'll notice that my clock speeds have already jumped to 3,020-something. Now, again, if you have a different board, even if it's a 9070 XT, yours might not be able to go to 360 watts. This is, again, one of the things that can be different board by board and one of the things that you're maybe paying for with like the factory overclocked type models. Now, when you do this, if you're drawing more watts, this means your card is going to be outputting more heat. And that could mean that fan speeds ramp up, temperatures could ramp up, and that's one of the downsides to uh, overclocking and increasing the board power. Um, now, if you don't want to increase the board power, you can still do some of the next steps regarding uh, GPU tuning and VRAM tuning, but you might, might not get as dramatic of a performance increase uh, without increasing the board power. Because notice we've already increased performance uh, here by bumping up the clock speeds. Now, if you want to ma monitor performance, you can do this while you're in a game. And how, how about I actually show you that real quick? So let's go back to more like the reference spec and look at what sort of frame rate we're running at. Now, I'm going to hit Control-Shift-O to open up a performance overlay. Uh, you can control the overlay settings within uh, the uh, driver software by clicking on, instead of tuning, metrics. And you can uh, change what things you're tracking. You can change the overlay size and settings and everything like that. Uh, but by turning on the overlay, uh, we can see the frames per second that we're actually running in this game right now is 76 FPS in Hellblade 2 in some random scene I opened up. We can see the temperatures and things like that. Um, looks like uh, it varies a little bit, jumped up from 76 to 77. So there's a little bit of variance in the scene, but that's about where we're at at the reference board power. Now, if I go all the way up to uh, my maximum power settings, again, let's see, we're defaulting around 76-ish FPS. Uh, bouncing up to 77 at times. Notice by applying that, 
we're now up to around 78, bouncing up occasionally to 79 FPS. So we have already increased performance a few percent just by sliding the board power to the right. So kind of neat. Now, uh, the other thing uh, that, that I would mainly want to do here is adjust the GPU tuning and the VRAM tuning. Fan tuning is something you can get into if you do feel like your fan speeds are too loud, your GPU is running too hot, and you want to kind of tr uh, try to control for that. I'm not going to get into that uh, in this particular video, and that can vary a lot based on what kind of uh, cooler model you have on your GPU. Mine doesn't sound overly noisy right now using the Red Devil. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to GPU tuning and click enabled. And now we get two controls here. We get access to max frequency offset and voltage offset. Now, interestingly here, what I'm finding is that on my Red Devil card, I don't really need to touch the max frequency offset in order to continue allowing it to go to higher and higher clock speeds. It's possible that other boards have set a lower clock speed limit and you may need to boost the clock speeds you're allowing it to try to hit by sliding this to the right. But I'm gonna show you something kind of interesting, which is um, notice that we're at uh, like 3127-ish, 3130-ish. Uh, so that's the kind of clock speeds we're hitting. Now, if I slide this all the way to plus 1000 and hit apply, I don't think we're gonna see any change to the clock speeds it's allowing me to hit. I'm giving it permission to go a lot further, but it's just not able to go a lot further at these settings. And again, on the Red Devil, I've already done some overclocking behind the scenes, and I have not had to increase my max frequency offset in order to get increased performance by adjusting the voltage offset, which is where we'll really see the performance gains. Now, another thing you can do here is decrease the frequency you're allowing the card to run at. Like I go to minus 500, uh, and we'll see that if, if I apply that, it's gonna pull the clock speeds down. And also notice that the total board power is coming down and my temperatures are coming down. So this is something you could do if you were wanting to control temperatures and power and things like that. So again, I found that on the Red Devil card I'm overclocking right now, I can leave this at zero. You may need to boost it uh, to give your card permission to go to higher um, clock speeds, but it seems like the default settings on the Red Devil are allowing it to um, uh, go as high as I'm able to go anyway. Now, on the voltage offset, this is where we're gonna get any additional performance beyond what I did with the total board power and then what we can do with memory. Now, the voltage offset is basically gonna reduce the voltage the card is running at. So for example, if I go to minus 40, uh, it's reducing the voltage. Now, wouldn't that lower performance? That's what a lot of people feel like when they hear undervolting is they're like, wait, won't that reduce my performance? And no, this is gonna increase the clock speed at the same watt. Uh, basically, if I can run the card stable at a lower voltage, then it can achieve a higher frequency at the same watts. So notice, when I click apply on minus 40, our clock speed is going to increase. So right now, again, we're bouncing between like 3120s and 3130s. When I click, click apply, uh, now notice that this is boosting to 3170 or so. So my clock speed increased when I decreased the voltage offset without drawing any additional power. That's how that works. So we're getting some additional performance here. The problem is that different cards are gonna be stable at different voltage offsets. You might get unlucky and your card might not be able to decrease the voltage offset at all without crashing in certain games. That's the silicon lottery. How lucky did you get on the exact GPU die that's in your card? And just because maybe you buy a power color red devil, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be able to achieve exactly the same uh, undervolts or overclocks that I'm able to. Um, there is some variance there, and you're only ever guaranteed to get the out-of-the-box performance of your card. That's all you're ever guaranteed. That being said, a lot of cards can push well beyond what's on the, on the tin. Now, generally how this process works is you'll slowly bump this in increments of like five or 10, you'll apply it, You'll check to see that you're getting some clock speed boost. If you're not, you could try giving your, yourself uh, permission to go further. Again, mine's going up without needing to give it additional permission, so this setting seems fine. And then you can see if your performance is going up. But then the other thing you should be doing is stress testing. I'm skipping that part because it takes a long time, and that's honestly the, the only part of this that's really kind of tedious 
is you should then play games, run games with built-in benchmarks, run uh, uh, you know synthetic benchmarks that can be stress tests. AMD has a stress test button here you can try out. And this is kind of the downside to an overclock, is that it's it can decrease the stability of your system and you might not notice it at first. So you might think you have a dial dialed in stable settings and then you try out a new game and suddenly the new game's crashing. And now you need to figure out is the new game broken or is my uh, overclock undervolt unstable? So personally, I actually don't uh, adjust my cards. I leave them at out of the box settings just for maximum stability. But that being said, um, a lot of cards will be perfectly stable at reasonable settings here. Now, again, you would adjust it a little bit more, adjust it a little bit more, stress test it, etc. If you go too far, the whole game might just crash instantly on you. But just because it's not crashing instantly doesn't guarantee it's stable. Now, I've done a bunch of testing off camera here, and I've found that while in this particular game, I could go a super aggressive to like 170, minus 170, minus 180, and I saw no issues in Hellblade 2, I found that when I loaded up Cyberpunk, um, even uh, I had to go all the way down to minus 100 or else it would crash. And then I found out when I went to Call of Duty that if I tried to run the built-in benchmark on that, I was seeing bad uh, frame time spikes and 1% lows at minus 100. And I had to get all the way back to minus 80. But at minus 80, uh, which is what I'm going to set now, notice I can boost to well over 3200 megahertz. And every game I've tested in the couple hours I've done this off camera has ran perfectly fine. I haven't seen any signs of uh, any issues. And um, uh, I'll show you some side-by-side -side performance testing in a minute. But again, how can you be 100% sure this is stable in every single game that exists or will exist? That's again, the, the downside to the uh, overclocking situation. Now, the uh, last thing I'll mention is VRAM tuning. Now, on a lot of other GPUs I have uh, uh, done this for, I've been able to get additional performance from VRAM tuning. I will say that on the particular Red Devil card that I'm doing here, which again, might behave differently than yours, I have not found it stable uh, on fast timings or by increasing the frequency. But you might try this out on your card to see uh, what you could do. If you go to fast, you can change the memory timing to fast timings, apply it, play games for a while, see if it's stable. If that's stable, you can also try out increasing the maximum frequency. And again, you would do it in little uh, chunks, maybe 50, then maybe 10, then 10, then 10, and see where you can get stable. But again, I'm getting the best performance and stability by leaving my VRAM tuning alone on the particular card that I'm working with here. So overall, what are we looking at here? Our frames per second are now sitting at around 80 to 81. Notice that if I go all the way back to default settings here, uh, this is dropping back to around 78-ish. So we got several frames per second better by just sliding a couple of sliders and doing a little bit of uh, uh, testing to make sure that that works. Now, let's go ahead and leave this and instead just show you the results from the overall um, uh, uh, overclock I was able to do here. So. I guess I'll sl slide my uh, camera position out of, out of the way here. So what are we looking at here? This is looking at my card running at its out-of-the-box settings in the middle uh, versus at its uh, manual overclock that we just looked at, the minus 80 megavolts and sl slid the power slider all the way to the right on the right here. Now on the far left, I have the Steel Legend, which is another 9070 XT card, which runs at what I believe are kind of reference specs out of the box. So no factory overclock, just kind of, uh, it is what uh, AMD says uh, you can get here. Now we can see the Steel Legend in Cyberpunk 4K RT Ultra FSR3 performance is hitting 71 FPS in the built-in benchmark, whereas the Red Devil factory overclock out of the box hits 73, and the Red Devil with the manual overclock is hitting 78, putting the manual overclock about 10% ahead of kind of reference specs, uh, but um, a few percent ahead uh, and five FPS ahead of the out of the box settings. If you look at the uh, frequency numbers up there, you can see that the GPU clocks are breaking three gigahertz on the Red Devil with the manual OC, but in this particular game, we're under three gigahertz on the other cards. Now on Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 4K basic settings, 
Uh, we are seeing the Steel Legend kind of running at reference 9070 XT uh, specs, hitting 149. The Red Devil with the factory overclock defaulting out of the box to 153. And with my manual overclock applied, hitting 160. Again, notice the frame time graphs are very smooth here. Uh, this is a, I initially started uh, benchmarking at minus 100 millivolts but uh, on the voltage offset. But when I did that, the OC was getting um, really bad frame time spikes on the frame time graph and really bad 1% lows. So I, that, this is the game where I noticed I had to back off to minus 80 instead of minus 100. Uh, now, I did test out uh, one other game, but I didn't have time to check it out on my Steel Legend. So, oh no, I have the wrong name typed in here, guys. This does not say COD Black Ops 6. This says Monster Hunter Wilds, and that does not say 4K Basic. Uh, that says Ultra Settings, which you can see up there. Now, 4K Ultra Settings, Ultra Settings in this game does default to using some upscaling. This is FSR 4 at the quality setting. Now, one reason I tested this game is it's a longer benchmark run, because again, to stress test the stability of an overclock, uh, don't assume a few seconds is gonna do it, right? So this is a longer benchmark, and you can even set this built-in benchmark to run on a loop. Um, so there's that, but also people have just been begging me to benchmark my 9070 XT and Monster Hunter Wilds, so I fit that into this video. <laughs> anyway, uh, on the left, you see the, uh, uh, the Red Devil running at its factory overclock kind of stock settings for this card, but above the reference spec for 9070 XTs, and on the right-hand side, you see the manual overclock. We're not getting a massive performance boost in this game from the manual overclock. It ended up being about a 3% performance boost by the end of the built-in benchmark. We're averaging 76 FPS with the manual overclock. And without the manual overclock, it's 73.5. Keep in mind that that does have a bit of a uh, factory overclock on it, right? If we looked at the Steel Legend at the 304 watts kind of reference, uh, we'd probably be down another one or two FPS or one or two percent. So. Anyway, that's what I'm getting out of this. Uh, I'd like to uh, remind you guys, though, that my personal preference on overclocking and undervolting is I value stability more than I value a few more percent of performance. So that's my personal preference. Um, another thing I'll mention here is if you're curious about the two cards, uh, this is the Power Color Red Devil and the Steel Legend is in white. And I did a little unboxing video on the members feed for my channel. This isn't trying to uh, paywall hide content or anything. It's just that I don't think an unboxing video in and of itself is particularly useful information or would perform well on YouTube or whatnot. But if you're curious, that's what they look like. You can see it here. Uh, anyway, so one of the things you get with a, a which GPU cooler do you buy is what do they look like? Another thing you get is what kind of power limits do they have both out of the box and what do they allow you to do manually? Anyway, hopefully you guys found this video useful and or interesting. Uh, I'm by no means any kind of overclocking expert, so I do not want to imply that this is the absolute best possible uh, overclock you could achieve on a 9070 XT or even my 9070 XT. What I'm trying to show you here is the absolute basics of how you can apply a simple overclock uh, to get a little bit more performance if that's something you're looking to do. I'm not an overclocking expert, and like I said, personally, don't even keep my, my cards overclocked or undervolted just because I, it makes me paranoid about, oh man, if I'm having any issues in a game, is it, is it my overclock or my undervolt or is it the game itself? Anyway, uh, I hope all of you guys have an excellent day.